right. Uh, joining us right now as we welcome you back to the Steve Malzberg Show. And by the way, in the next segment, I got some uh, some sports uh, stories I want to talk about. Did you see the end of the game, the Patriots uh, and the Panthers game uh, yesterday on Monday Night Football? Uh, Tom Brady almost did it again, almost led the charge for a, a last second, last drive, fourth quarter comeback victory, but it was not to be. An apparent pass interference in the end zone was not called by the referees, and Tom Brady gave him an earful at the end of the game. We will discuss that right here on ABC Sports. Anyway, um, and also, will the Yankees give Robinson Cano a, don't you know, a $300 million contract? Um, I'll give you a hint. The answer rhymes with his last name. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But right now joining us is our friend whose last name does not rhyme with Cano. Uh, <laughs> former Congressman Pete Hoekstra, former uh, House Intelligence Committee chair. Hello, Congressman. Hey, hi, Steve. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fine, although I'll tell you, this president and his secretary of state, uh, you know, where they come up with some of their ideas, I will never know. Well, let, let me uh, give you this one. Let me, let, let's start before we get to uh, Iran and, and, and Israel and what's going on there. Um, I, you know, there, there's a lot of talk uh, as to the president not being at the 150th anniversary of the uh, Gettysburg Address. And uh, this is something that was written about weeks and weeks ago. So to say his schedule doesn't permit it is just total and utter nonsense. But um, maybe he's writing another address. Uh, I speculated because there's a report out today at foxnews.com uh, that Obama is reportedly going to, as part of the new security deal with Afghanistan, not only are we going to be keeping troops there for a long, long time, but he's going to write an open letter to the Afghani people basically apologizing for American mistakes. Well, that's exactly what I was talking about uh, when we started this conversation. It's not only about Iran and, and Israel, but I saw the same report, and uh, I talked to the folks at Newsmax earlier today. Uh, you know, here we are. We are attacked by a, you know, a radical terrorist group out of Afghanistan. We send our troops in. We remove the threat of al-Qaeda from Afghanistan. We remove the brutal regime of the Taliban. From being in government, you know, from controlling the government in Afghanistan, we pay with the price, you know, the price of our treasures, the lives of our young men and women uh, in in the military. Uh, we've paid billions of dollars into a corrupt regime to try to get this government and this people uh, on their feet. And this Secretary of State, to get a deal, says, "Hey, you know what? How about if our president writes in a, a letter of apology?" to the Afghan people for the mistakes that we have made. It's, you, know, you, you couldn't make this stuff up. I, I just hope it was a trial balloon that you know, got about one inch off of the ground and that the sane and rational people in that administration stamped on it and said, that's a really bad idea. Uh, you know, and well, you're well, you're a congressman, it. you're making an assumption. Uh, how many sane and rational people are there in that administration? I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making that assumption. I mean, Congressman, I this is a president. This is a president who sat on ABC News um, during his first term, earlier in his first term, and talked about how I don't like to, to, to use the word victory. He says, as it applies to Afghanistan, I don't, I don't like to use the word victory because it invokes memories of, of Japan surrendering to the U.S. He actually said of the emperor of Japan sitting down and surrendering. Of course, that never happened. But, um, I mean, here's a guy who doesn't like to use the word victory, has apologized on behalf of America to countless foreign leaders and foreign peoples, and now he's going to do it again. Why, why would you think it's not going to happen? Because uh, I'm an eternal optimist <laughs> about the good of America. And I, you know, I mean, hey, Steve, I'm sure you have met, I have met with the families who have lost loved ones, um, and the, you know, the price that they've made, the uh, the wounded vets uh, that have come back from both Afghanistan and Iraq, um, and if this president issues any kind of an apology that uh, denigrates their work and their sacrifice. Uh, it would, you know, I, I, I mean, it would be unbelievable, uh, you know, I, and so, yeah, I, I just, I can't imagine that a president of the United States, 
you know, would make that kind of a, of, of a statement or an apology. It was war. Our men and women did everything we asked them to do and more. We did a lot for the Afghan people. Um, and, you know, this, this just can't happen. Yeah, we're talking. can't. I, I, I am so with you, but uh, there is nothing. Everything this president does is in your face. He doesn't care, and uh, I don't put anything past him. We're talking to former Congressman Pete Hoekstra uh, here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, you know, it, it, I don't even know what to say about Iran anymore. Uh, the, the stories that have been coming out from, from senators that have uh, been in these meetings where the White House and the Secretary of State uh, and his people are telling the senators, don't listen to Israel, don't listen to Netanyahu, and publicly they come out and say that Netanyahu doesn't know what he's talking about, and publicly they come out and basically praise Iran. And, and I don't know, I forget which who I was talking to earlier in the show, I don't understand how you don't put together, um, if you're going to have a nuclear deal, how it doesn't have to go hand in hand uh, as part of a comprehensive deal. Uh, Afghanistan is, uh, is uh, the, the Taliban's getting explosives and training from Iran and the terrorist organizations within Iran or the ones that, uh, that uh, uh, Iran controls. Uh, of course, uh, Hezbollah is in Syria. I mean, it goes on and on and on. The blood, the American blood on the hands of Iran and that'll re that has been there and that will remain there even if they sign some kind of a, a meaningless deal on nuclear weapons. How do you how do you sit down with these people and trust them when they're still killing Americans? Well, I think uh, Steve, come on, you and I both know we're going to follow the successful model of North Korea. We are going to offer concessions. Uh, Iran, just like North Korea, will stop their nuclear program. They will stop the brutality of persecution uh, in their countries, and they will start behaving. Uh, like a civilized Western country. We saw that formula work in North Korea. Now we will see it work in Iran. And it's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. It didn't work in North Korea. They, we gave them concessions. Uh, they didn't change their behavior. We gave them concessions. They didn't change their behavior. Uh, and we're going to see the same thing in Iran. We have, you know, we have no reason in, you know, in, in rational thinking that that would lead one to think that if we provide concessions to Iran, that they will change their behavior. They will laugh all the way to their enrichment facilities, continuing enrichment uh, and continuing their development and push towards a nuclear weapon. Yeah, I know. You're, well, you're absolutely right. You're 100 percent right. Uh, and, and it's just it's so frightening uh, the direction that we're headed in. And, and it seems to be full steam ahead and it seems to be absolutely no stopping um, uh, this administration. I want to. I want to. I want to take it out of the the realm here of uh, of foreign policy for a second, and and talk about the story broken uh, by the New York Post today. Uh, basically, John Cradell, who uh, has been in contact with a uh, a, a census uh, employee who was caught fudging the numbers on the uh, on the uh, uh, labor statistic numbers. Of course, the president moved the Census Bureau into the White House, which was unprecedented. And now it turns out, according to him, and there's documentation that Cradell has seen and received, that the decline of the unemployment rate from over 8 percent to under 8 percent in September, from August to September of 2012, just in time to get Obama uh, reelected, uh, was phony. Well, <laughs> what's the surprise there? Uh, you know, everything that was happening, and I was running, uh, uh, you know, I was running for the U.S. Senate at this point in time. Uh, you know, so, yeah, the unemployment, every, every avenue, every stick of the federal government that they could use to make, you know, the situation look better. Uh, you know, and you, you know, so you've got the census, so you've got the unemployment numbers. Uh, you also have what's going, you know, what went on in Benghazi, where we still don't know what happened in Benghazi. Uh, the, the story was purely political. Uh, you know, we, you know, we just keep hearing more and more. Uh, the, the, you know, the good thing is the president's poll numbers are plummeting, so he won't be able to get anything through Congress. His credibility is orders to put his imprint uh, on the United States, on you know, our economic policies and our foreign policy. Uh, we're going to have a deep hole to dig out of uh, when this president leaves office. Um, and, you know, it, uh, I couldn't. I, I, as, you, as you and I have said, there's nothing that really surprises us anymore uh, as we hear more and more about this administration. All right, one more for you. T Tom DeLay was just with us earlier in the hour, and I asked him, I said, you know, as I asked so many people, 
because that's all you hear from the, the left, whether they're in the media or, uh, poli or, or elected officials, uh, when it comes to health care, where's the Republican plan? Uh, they haven't passed anything. Where, you know, what are they going to do? Get rid of this, get rid of that, that people like in the plan. And I've said all along, just pass a one-page thing, keeping the highlights of the Obama plan that people like, and get rid of the other 1,800 pages, and you'll shut the left up. And Tom DeLay says, no. don't. They, the, the, the Republicans in the House should not pass or offer anything, he said. Leave it to the states. Leave it to the localities. You know, pass legislation maybe to allow interstate uh, insurance purchases. Uh, but that's it, he said, because it's anything else, in his view, is unconstitutional when it comes to uh, federal regulation of health care. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, you're going to have to pass something to, to repeal uh, Obamacare. So it's maybe not much more than one page, uh, one or two pages. Get that done, and then you're absolutely right. Uh, return it to the states. Uh, you know, and, you know, as we're talking about Tom DeLay, here's another guy that, you know, personally paid against this individual. Nothing but hardball politics by the left uh, to destroy Tom DeLay. Uh, but, you know, it would probably take you 800 pages to repeal all the federal government involvement, to list all the parts of the federal government where they have come in uh, and just screwed up health care in this country. Um, you know, that doesn't mean, it, you know, just to get rid of it all, to identify it all would take uh, a couple of hundred pages. But basically, Tom is right. Uh, allow health care to be regulated uh, and managed through the states. Uh, you know, I think uh, Mike Pence, the governor in Indiana, is asking for a waiver, uh, you know, to have Medicaid expansion in Indiana. Uh, but it's based on uh, personal accounts, uh, you know, uh, health savings accounts and those types of things. Uh, you know, let the states experiment. Uh, let the states develop the solutions. We've seen what happens when the federal government uh, is trying to manage health care. You know, uh, Congressman, I'll leave you with this. Uh, Barack Obama, two, two legacies possibly. One, um, and let's hope it doesn't get worse than this. If you like your insurance, you could keep it. Uh, and the other, he, the man who brought uh, Israel and the Saudis together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, I, he abandoned both yeah. countries, and now they're he finding each other. You know, I mean, what what do you say? I mean, you know, Israel, a staunch ally, and and we're abandoning them. It is it is it, it's unconscionable what this president is doing in foreign policy. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it, it, and the other thing is, it's scary. It is scary, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon, sir. Thank you for your time, as always. Always good to you. You picked you picked me on a good day. Glad to be with you. Good, today. thank you, Congressman you Pete Hoekstra, former. Uh, Congressman from Michigan and former chair of the House Intelligence Committee here on the Steve Molsberg Show. All right, don't forget, immediately following this show, at the top of the hour, top of this hour, if you're watching at Newsmax TV, stay there because you're going to be able to see uh, a special documentary, Lincoln at Gettysburg, hosted by our very own John Fun, Lincoln at Gettysburg. And if you're listening on the radio or somewhere else to uh, the Steve Molsberg Show, go at the top of the hour to NewsmaxTV.com. NewsmaxTV.com. Watch the special documentary. We're coming back, though.